Hello and welcome to the presentation of the 8L90 Teardown. This section is going to include the teardown, rebuild, and all the subsections of this unit. So with that in mind, we're going to get right into this transmission. And this 8L90 section is brought to you by Precision International. Now, getting into this unit, basically this is, happens to be a Corvette version of the 8L90 application. As you know from previous uh, sections in the BTS presentation, uh, they do have an 8L45 variant, which is going to be smaller. Uh, the Corvette 8L90 is very special in itself that it is mounted uh, through a torque tube behind the driver's compartment. So it's a mid-engine type vehicle uh, with a rear transmission type setup and the uh, differential is bolted directly to the transmission. So we don't have a bell housing but we have a removable torque tube housing that goes along with this and the torque converter is going to be a conventional type of setup. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary there. So with that in mind, that's why we don't see an integral bell housing. All other mod models of this unit will have an integral bell housing, uh, non-removable style. Now when removing the pump cover, there's uh, a couple ways that you can do this. Uh, General Motors shows you in the manual, in the instructions, to use uh, two slide hammers. Uh, there's going to be some threaded holes. In this position and this position, you see these holes are threaded and they are uh, they will allow you access to screw your uh, 3 8 uh, type thread slide hammer into those areas and you can slide hammer this uh, assembly out. Uh, it's a little bit rough as you'll see uh, basically there's a very thick o-ring that you have to overcome and if this transmission has been in the, in the uh, vehicle for an extended period of time it's not going to want to cooperate with you. So with that in mind uh, we did find another method that is uh, very useful and very helpful. However, uh, first thing uh, you want to look at, uh, basically because with the threaded holes, we can actually uh, pull the unit out with uh, bolts and all you need is a couple of uh, 3 8 uh, by 16 thread bolts. Uh, you want to get them long enough so that you can um, uh, go for about an inch or so. So again, we got some kind of extra long, long bolts, uh, uh, so we got plenty of throw space. Also, I recommend to use some check balls in the bottom pocket there so that we don't damage the thread uh, and the pumps, the, the stator surface. So with that in mind, the check balls that I'm using here to actually act as a pressing surface are about three, three inches or so, point zero, well, point three zero zero inches. So a couple of check balls that will drop right in there and actually, uh, kind of protect uh, that surface down there for the stator so and that's just because the bolt ends you know usually cheap bolts they're not going to really do too much for the finish but if you have a nice finish or a bevel on the bolts then they will they won't uh, have any issue as far as or pose a threat to damage the uh, stator surface below so just putting those two bolts in is going to allow us to walk this cover out and you just want to bring it out just very easily and again it's going to draw out pretty quickly once you get to that point and you'll just see it just pop right out as we witness right here and it doesn't take much effort then from there you can pull the pump cover off there is going to be a thrust washer on the back side uh, of the cover here so you want to make sure that you uh, Give that, give an account for that. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and rotate this in an upward position here. And let's lock this in. And we're gonna take the pan off, because we're gonna have to take the valve body out of here. And we're gonna take these bolts out, and pop this pan off. There's 15 bolts on this, so we're going to uh, take the pan off. And notice that we have a uh, rubberized gasket. It's a pretty thick gasket. We have uh, locators and everything that allow us to actually get this located on the pan as well as on the case. So again, very straightforward. Something that General Motors has been doing for a while. Let's get the filter out of the way. Notice that the filter has a uh, rib type seal 
and we have a little spring type mechanism here and that's going to give us positive pressure up against the pan. And you notice there's a little bit of a recess here so I like to call that a little window of opportunity. So we'll take a closer look at that recess and uh, pretty much the inlet is going to uh, be in that area so that we don't end up with a situation of um, cavitating or restricting that inlet. Now, with the filter out of the way, we expose the valve body, the internal wiring harness. Now, before we get to the valve body and the internal wiring harness, we want to go back to our pump, drive, and driven gears. With everything uh, exposed like this, this gives us an opportunity to remove this oil baffle. This oil baffle is designed to keep the oil from getting aerated and churned as this um, drive gear and driven gear operate. And we're going to be in the oil sump area, so we don't want to, you know, take it like a egg beater and uh, create air bubbles in there. Air bubbles mean we're not able to compress the oil, we can't cool it. So if we get a sudsing situation, then we're going to have a problem with controlling the temperature of the transmission. So the oil weir, pretty much it's, uh, we want to make sure that it's intact. It's got these little ears. They're pretty strict about uh, keeping the oil put. So again, if you notice this is damaged or cracked, you're going to need, to need to replace that. Also, the bolts that secure this, these are torque to yield bolts. They're very flimsy, non-magnetic. So um, basically, that's an indicator that you're going to need to replace these bolts um, going back together. Now, going to the pump drive and driven gears. Basically, we're looking at the pump drive and driven gears here. And for the most part, uh, with the cover off, we have more control over this uh, drive and driven gear assembly. Now, uh, General Motors, they want you to go ahead and reach in here on the uh, driven gear side, and they want you to rotate things until we actually get to a locking mechanism in here, which we, we uh, are going to show you a little bit later on in the presentation. But at this point, we don't even have to bother that because a lot of times, I'm sorry, I got big fingers and big fingers means I'm not going to get into small places. But you can get in here with your scribe and actually uh, unleash this uh, gear. But why bother if you have this kind of access, right? Okay, less work, easier. I like this way better. All right, so at this point, everything's free. All you have to do is bring this gear up a little bit, take it off the chain. Now you do want to take note, the shiny side goes towards the pump cover. So the shiny side is up. And you also want to go ahead and zip tie this uh, to the gear some kind of way so that you keep this chain running in the same direction. You never want to swap directions with a chain. Same uh, rule as a gear to gear type situation. You don't want to change the gear to gear uh, lash because basically then you can run the chance of creating or generating noise. So again, make a note of the direction that the chain is running and keep it running in the same direction. All right, now let's lock this into position here. And we're, we are going to return back to the front pump cover. So we're going to uh, leave that um, as is for now. And we're going to focus on removing the valve body. Now, as far as removing the valve body, the first thing we're going to do is actually remove the internal harness. So by removing the internal harness, we got a few little clips that we have to be worried about. First, we got the internal mode switch where we have a little latch right here where we have to lift up first. Otherwise, we're going to break things if we don't uh, do that. And then we can depress this little tab here and it allows us to release that mechanism like so. As far as the individual solenoids, Pulse width solenoids pretty much are all about the same. If you get your flathead screwdriver in there, you can push down. It's a little release lever that's going to allow you to remove these pretty quickly and pretty easily. And with the on-off solenoids, you have two on-off solenoids here. Basically, they're about the same thing as well. Uh, they have a little tab that you can see in the opening there. And everything just slides off pretty good. They are positive locking too. so. You do want to make sure that they do lock. Now, at this point, 
we have an overall harness lock here, which is going to actually secure this harness to internal components as well as the case connector part of the harness. So the valve body harness is separate from the rest of this and it separates right at this junction. Now this junction is very critical because this is going to allow us um, access to release this from the rest of the unit. So at this point we don't have to take this off of the valve body. So we can remove the valve body with this harness on. So that's one point. I like to get it out of the way because there's some bolts where you know you have to remove uh, the valve body. It's right in the way and you gotta you know kind of finagle things. So that's just me. So just to keep that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and take this um, harness off. And again, there's a couple things that uh, you want to keep in mind taking this harness off. Basically, first of all, there's little squeeze tabs that come in here. And you just, I mean, they almost show you what you need to do. They kind of reach out like little babies with their arms wide open and you just kind of squeeze them in and it's like they come out and then the harness kind of pops up just like that. So it's very serviceable. This unit is very service friendly. Uh, that's something that I like about this unit. And then the only thing we got here is a little tab right here that you got to kind of weasel out a little bit, which, you know, it's kind of like a threaded hole that it pops into. It's like a quick push type deal. Get that out of the way and you've got the internal harness out and gone. Now you have total access to all the bolts that you need to remove the valve body. Now, as far as uh, accessing these bolts, it is going to require a special uh, Torx uh, bit type of uh, tool, and they call it a Torx Plus. So again, you're going to have to purchase this Torx Plus to get this valve body separated from the case. So before we actually take these bolts off, I do like to remove the uh, detent spring. So let's. Uh, not get ahead of ourselves here and go ahead and remove the detent spring. That's going to take an eight millimeter bolt head. Take that off. And notice that is in the uh, little U portion of the internal mold switch. Again, that's going to be uh, something that's noteworthy as far as reassembly. So take that off, put that off to the side. And at this point, since we're right here, we can go ahead and release the manual lever. So the manual lever has got a little spring and a hook, very similar to the old 4T65Es. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Move the spring back, it gives you the opportunity to pull that mechanism out of the manual valve uh, uh, little hole there where that rod goes. And that's released. Now we're ready to just remove the bolts that's going to separate the valve body from the case. So we're removing the last uh, valve body bolt here. And again, uh, there's going to be a total of uh, four of the smaller bolts. And it looks like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the longer bolts, or actually eight of the longer bolts. And basically, again, pretty straightforward. Uh, all the bolts with the special uh, Torx head, those are the ones that are going to be removed to actually separate the valve body from the case. Once we get that off, pretty much all we have to do is just lift this whole mechanism off straight up, just like that, and it off to the side. Now, real quick, now if you were removing the gear with the uh, pump cover on, let me show you that really quickly. There is a portion right at the 12 o'clock position where I have this now, where the actual clip can be accessed from the back side. And again, you have to really, you know, again, if you have small fingers, you can get in there and get the chain off and all that, but it really is a pain in the neck, I'm sorry. But you can do it and it just pops off pretty easily too. Just uh, pull it back towards you and then pull it up and it pops right off. So again, here's a close up of the mechanism. And that's facing the uh, pump or the valve body side. So you have to get your scribe underneath there and hook it and pull it back. So again, uh, half a dozen in one hand, six in the other, whatever uh, really works for you there. 
but I just showed you that method because that works a lot better for me with big fingers.